Olivia Watercolor Wizards, Hajra here. Today I'm going to be talking about all sorts of watercolor journals. Watercolor journals are a super fun buy or make and it sort of becomes a little collection of paintings that are themed. You can even have a little narrative if you want. Make it completely random, it's totally up to you. So I'm going to start by just showing you a very basic watercolor journal. This is a moleskin three and a half by five and a half. It's one of the smaller watercolor journals that you can find. I like the paper okay. I've gotten used to it the more I've worked on it. It is great for simple ink pieces, simple watercolor pieces, or traveling because it really is super compact. Fun size and a fun brand to have and that's the Moleskin watercolor journal. Got lots of unfinished pieces in here, some bits and stuff, nuts and bolts, everything in here. Similar one by Pentalic. Everybody who's ever reviewed this always says that this journal is better. And the only thing I have in here is a note to myself to start on the other side because I'm left-handed. I started on the wrong side for this one and it's been harder for me to get away from the spine because I'm a lefty. Nice bookmark in it. It also has a place for you to put a pen or a brush. It's got a pocket, dark blue binding and a strap that goes over it and the Pentalic stamp right there embossed into the cover. This has a black cover. I put an ugly piece of tape there. It doesn't come with that. It does have a pocket on this side that you can also put drafting paper and such on down the side with, but there is no bookmark and it does also have a strap, but it also does not have a holder for your pencil. I've heard over and over again that the paper is better. It definitely feels quite a bit thicker. Super thick, almost flat semi-cold press finish. This one also has a semi-cold press finish, but the paper is much thinner. Other types of moleskin journals just for thumbnails. And I actually cut and paste to thumbnails from my Kickstarter from a few years ago into here because I just wanted to be inspired to start doing pretty thumbnails in here. Numerous pages for larger size thumbnails that you wanna lay out. And then halfway through it switches to smaller thumbnails that you can have some text written next to. It is nice to have a larger thumbnail and then smaller thumbnails in this entire section. They don't get any smaller than that, thankfully. This does come with a nice little bookmark ribbon down the center that you can put in. And this is definitely not watercolor paper, by the way. This is just like cardstock. It feels like some kind of Bristol cardstock. I would use marker, pen, or pencil in here. I guess you could use watercolor pencil and make it the teeniest bit wet, but you'd have to be pretty careful. So that's also moleskin, same size, but for thumbnails. So of this size, I have one more journal. And this one was actually sent to me for free. I can't tell if this is watercolor paper. It was not labeled as having watercolor paper. So I can only assume that it's not. It looks like it's a thick cardstock. But what I really like about it is just it's a linear accordion. You can have a really long piece in one direction or a panorama or something that follows a narrative and it would be really cool to have that. And you can also flip through it like a normal book, but it doesn't have a back spine to keep it from folding out if you stretch it out. So I also have five by eight journals as well. Just like I have a small pentalic, I've got a five by eight larger pentalic. It's a bigger replica of the smaller one, including the bookmark ribbon, the pencil or brush holder, and the strap to close it, and also a pocket in the back for sketches. Again, the paper feels super thick. It feels like Arches paper. So in this larger size, apart from the pentalic, I also have journal from the Handbook Journal Company. I sort of went journal crazy and bought a lot of them all at once a few years ago, and then I realized that they were a lot more trouble to finish than I thought and have only finished one and a half. This is the five and a half by 8.25. It says it's great for pen and ink, pencil and markers and accepts light watercolor washes without buckling and it's acid free. It feels like nice drawing paper, but it feels even thinner than the the paper inside of the moleskin journal. So this is definitely for drawing or for ink work because this is super thin. But I got these because I really liked the color of the cover. So this one has a blue cover. And then I got two which were in squares, which I thought were really interesting in the size, five and a half by five and a half. So it's just a little square. And I got that in green and red. I probably just won't be getting any more journals for the rest of my life. Okay, so in this larger size that we were looking at, I also had a moleskin, just like I have a small moleskin. And most of my live streams were in this journal. Well, I took it apart and what I did was I took all the pages and cut them out, straightened out the edge on a paper trimmer, and I rounded the two corners that were coming out because two of the corners are already rounded and I rounded the other two on the back. I sell some of my pieces. If you are interested in buying any of them, then just email me. Cut them out so I can frame them up or sell them depending on what I wanna do with these. I can still sort of flatten it and carry it and nothing falls out. Got pieces that I didn't finish 
that are here, and then I've got finished pieces. Tarzan piece, flowers piece, this peacock, and you can change their order, which sometimes can be really annoying, and a journal for me is when I can't change the order of stuff because I feel like I have pieces I like, and then pieces I like less, and pieces that are not finished. So this allows me to do that. So this might look like a mess to you, but to me this is very convenient. You can also just get some other empty book cover that's old, and they stripped out book spine and cut out pieces of paper to that size. You can put like a rubber band side of it and protected but still loose set of drawings. So I think that's definitely a type of watercolor journal for me because that's what I did to two of my watercolor journals. So that's a dismantled watercolor journal is what I would call that and I find that super enjoyable. So I have different sized art portfolios from Itoya stretched out hairband on it to keep it closed all the way. What I really like about this is that I can change the order of paintings in here, put different pieces that I have and collect them. And if I sell them or choose to hang them up, they can sort of come out. Or if I wanna change their order and make them thematic, they can do that. So for me, this is like a journal. This may not be a journal to some people, but to me it is. I do consider this to be a format for a journal and I find it really interesting and exciting. And it is acid free and a nice way to protect your work, an instant watercolor journal. So I've shown this ATC blank card collection that I put into baseball card sleeves a few weeks ago. Again, this may not seem like a watercolor journal to some of you guys, but if I put this into a binder or put covers around it, it becomes like an actual journal. It's an adjustable journal. You can see by the way that I got Annika's card finally from Sweden. And these are the two cards that we did a collab on. And it's just really cool for me to see her side of the collab and my side of the collab in one place together and just how different our interpretations were and that's a benefit of having a watercolor journal that has sleeves is that you can actually put other people's pieces in there and I'm not going to show you how to make a bound book there's plenty of YouTube videos that show you how you can bind that glue these signatures together and then make your own sort of cover covered with book cloth or with paper and glue it down it's actually pretty easy if you like gluing and cutting and pasting so you can try your hand at that but I am going to show you how to make some really easy ones to just to cut and fold some really simple ones that are almost instant. You guys have probably seen my color wheels in previous videos numerous times and these are just of all the different colors that I own. To me this is a color wheel journal. I have all the different colors that I ever bought put down in wheels into here. So if you want to take something as simple as a single binder ring or a single brad, you can turn a stack of something that's thematic into a journal that is just connected from the corner. I actually can cut these down to the same size and then put covers on either side and it becomes pretty secure and you can also sort of hold it or hang it up from the corner like put like a little keychain end on it, covers on the back and front and it looks really pretty. And you can even make your composition so that if you are doing paintings that they are coming down on a diamond diagonal because it can be hung on the wall. I'm just using mine for a stack of color wheels but you can do whatever sorts of paintings in the same format. It just becomes a cool really quick instant unorthodox art journal. So now I'm going to show you some mini journals that I made. You can make these at any size. If you use the largest size of watercolor paper by Arches or BFK Reeves, you can have a pretty decent sized journal. So the first one I'm going to show you is this eight page journal. And it's actually something I learned back in elementary school, folded into eight equal rectangular sections like I have here. And that's just by folding it in half and then folding it in half again and folding it in half again. And then when you unfold it all, and then just cut a mouth in it, right here in a diamond shape, then what ends up happening is you can flop this paper down onto itself and it turns into an eight page book. When I was in the third or fourth grade, that was like super magical and it kind of still is because I'm not really that different than I was when I was <laughs> third and fourth grade. So basically you can have eight pages total with this or you can have six pages and two covers. So if you wanted bigger pages, cut a bigger piece of paper. If you want a smaller page journal, then cut a smaller piece of paper. For me, at this size, it's good because I can show you on screen how to fold these. In this case, there's 16 squares or rectangles folded into this entire piece of paper. After that, you cut the center into two doors like this. You cut two of these saloon cowboy doors into the center of this piece of paper without touching any of the border squares so that you don't make a cut all the way through. Fold these doors out like that. And then after that, you take the top line of it, fold it down, a bottom line of it, and fold it up. And now you've got something that looks like this with the two doors on it and like a hill in the center. Fold that in half. And just like you had a little diamond in the center here, you end up having something like a little diamond in the center here 
and when you end up pushing that together, it turns into its own book. So this one had eight usable pages and includes the front and back cover. So this has double the amount of pages, there are 16. I don't really like how these pages are thinner and some of them are thicker. You can use them as envelopes. Some people do that to pull stuff out or glue them together and just so that way nobody's confused about how to turn them. I just prefer the, the simpler fold one. So those are those two journals, a linear folding accordion journal earlier, you can just fold one of these right on your own with a long piece of paper. Cut out a long piece of paper that you're not using, whether it's a scrap. You can slap on some covers on both sides from leftover cardboard that you want to paint or cover with nice paper and glue it down and you just have a really simple journal. And this is the kind that I saw Kathy Johnson fold on her YouTube channel a few years back and she did it out of a large sheet of Arches watercolor paper. And you can see how it's cut into a W. Basically like taking a little maze through the paper, all the way through. This is a variation of the accordion journal, but it's called a maze journal because it gives you a little maze shape like that. Fold 16 squares into it, you'll cut through three of them on one side, three of them on the opposite side, and then three of them again on the top side, and it'll give you a W. So with an accordion journal, you fold it front to back, front to back, front to back, until it becomes an accordion. From the straight side, you say front and then back, and when you get to the corner, you don't wanna cover up your previous pages, and so you're gonna fold it onto the last page, not onto the first pages that you were folding. So now you fold it onto this side, and it's added an additional page to the journal, and now you fold in a zigzag fashion again, top to bottom, until you get to the corner. Again, you wanna to fold towards the last page, not towards a stack of previous pages when you get to the corner. So you make the last page meet the next new page, and then you do the same thing all the way across, until you end up with a full journal. So this is gonna be similar to this type of cutout journal in that some of the pages are gonna have different fold thicknesses. And when you're painting in this journal, you can actually paint completely front to back and not care at all about those thicker pages. And then when you get to the end, you can turn it, the cover right over and go back in the other direction. And then it'll give you more pages in a completely linear fashion. Now, the only pages that you're gonna now miss are the ones that are in the vertical fold-out spreads. And what I mean by that is that when you're going linearly, you skip anything that folds out in this way. So you can choose to ignore those pages or you can choose to include them. You can make them into envelopes. You can do separate longer paintings on them or you can skip right by them. But that is an option so that you can use all of your pages. So instead of flipping right by this longer page, you can flip it up and then use both of them in a long direction. As a quick visual recap, I showed you three different handbook drawing journals in a square size, and also in the longer five and a half by eight size with the drawing paper in it. I showed you the pentalics and the moleskins, which are great for watercoloring and for gouache and ink, with the pentalic definitely having better reviews for better paper, and also a few more sort of perks on them, like a bookmark and a brush holder. And I also showed you a thumbnail journal that you can put thumbnails in, that's also by moleskin. And I showed you how I dismantled hold my larger moleskin journal to hold my loose drawings in case I wanted to organize them thematically or sell them or hang them up. I've shown you how you can do a maze journal and I've shown you an accordion journal that you should be able to make on your own if you can fold a maze journal. And I've shown you how to make these eight and 16 page cutout fold journals. And that's a lot of cool DIY instant journals that you can make with any paper that you have lying around to make tiny journals or larger journals depending on the size of paper that you want to use. If you don't want to sew and if you don't want to do any kind of stapling, have a single ring to have a diagonal hanging journal or you can use multiple rings. But if you use sleeves, you can also have pages that can be changed out however you want. If you get back to the more bought journals, an art portfolio like this, feel free to use your stuff however you want. For me, this is a really exciting format to think of as an art journal collection. But I just wanted to share this video that is all about different types of art and watercolor journals, whether you buy them or you DIY them or something in between. Check out the description box below for my website links. And if you want to buy my originals or prints, go to my Redbubble shop or contact me via email. Hope you're inspired to do some watercolor journaling of your own. And until next time, wishing you all amazing journaling adventures.